Concurrent computing has a solid theoretical background, and most modern programming languages provide advanced support for concurrency. Yet implementing effective and reliable concurrency in real-life software projects can be very difficult. Spawning threads, managing their life cycle, and synchronizing their access to shared resources isn't for the faint-hearted. Apple decided to lift the burden of dealing with threads and synchronization primitives off the shoulders of developers. They created Grand Central Dispatch, a framework that abstracts and simplifies concurrent programming by introducing the concept of dispatch queues. A dispatch queue is an object responsible for managing the execution of tasks. When we submit a task to a dispatch queue, the system takes care of the thread management part. The thread comes from a pre-created pool of threads reserved for task execution. These threads are created once and reused whenever necessary to prevent the overhead of thread spawning and destruction. If there are no idle threads available in the thread pool, the system creates a new one. The process is entirely invisible to us, and we can't influence which thread executes the task we submitted to the queue. Note that the number of threads that can execute at once is limited by the number of processor cores available in our system. By hiding the complexity of low-level thread creation and management, we get a simpler API and the system can perform under-the-hood performance optimizations. A dispatch queue always starts tasks in a first-in, first-out fashion. However, queues differ in the way they schedule task execution. A queue can be either serial or concurrent. A serial queue executes one task at a time. It doesn't start a new task if there is one already executing. The running task must finish before the next one can start. Let's say that I submit task A, task B, and task C to a serial queue. The queue starts task A first and waits until it completes. Next, it executes task B. Finally, when task B finishes, the queue executes task C. On the other hand, a concurrent queue fires each task without considering the completion status of the previous task. Since tasks execute concurrently and they don't have to wait for each other, the order of completion is not guaranteed. Back to our previous example. The concurrent queue starts task A, but it doesn't wait for it to complete. It fires task B next and then task C with no delay, assuming there are enough available threads. We can't tell which task will complete first because they run concurrently. Both serial and concurrent dispatch queues can execute tasks synchronously or asynchronously. If we schedule a task synchronously, the caller waits until the task completes. Whereas in the case of an asynchronously submitted task, the control returns immediately to the caller. In other words, scheduling a task synchronously or asynchronously determines when the caller's code regains control. Let's explore the possible scenarios. There are four different cases in total. Submitting a task synchronously to a serial queue. The caller waits for the task to complete. The serial queue can't execute other tasks while this one is running. The task finishes and the control gets returned to the caller. Case number two, submitting a task asynchronously to a serial queue. After submitting the task, the client's code continues executing. The serial queue executes the task and it won't start other tasks before the current one finishes. The task finishes eventually. Case number three, submitting a task synchronously to a concurrent queue. The control isn't returned to the caller until the task completes. The queue may run other tasks concurrently. The task finishes and the control is returned to the caller. And finally, case number four, submitting a task asynchronously to a concurrent queue. The client's code continues executing after submitting the task. The concurrent queue can start other tasks along with the most recently submitted one. All right, I hope this makes sense. Understanding the differences between serial and concurrent queues and synchronous versus asynchronous task scheduling is crucial before delving deeper into Grand Central Dispatch and Dispatch queues. 
As we saw earlier, the dispatch framework operates with queues. To be precise, there are three types of queues we can work with. The first one we discuss is the main queue, which is responsible for user interface related tasks such as updating the UI elements and responding to user events. On that note, never update the UI from a background thread. Now, the main queue is serial. That is, it cannot run more than one task at the same time. The system creates the main queue automatically and assigns the application's main thread to it. Every app has exactly one main thread, which has the highest priority to ensure fast execution so that the user interface stays responsive. Executing long-running tasks on the main thread may block the user interface, and the operating system can ultimately decide to kill the app if it's been unresponsive for too long. Now, let's reopen the demo application we used in the previous module. I put a breakpoint here in the view controller's view did load method at line 13. Hit run. And we reached our breakpoint. Type po thread dot is main thread in the Xcode console. This command prints true if we're currently running on the main thread. Indeed, it's the main thread as expected. We shouldn't confuse the main queue with the main thread. Although the main queue runs its tasks on the main thread, it is not reserved exclusively for the main queue. As I'll show you in the upcoming chapter, other queues may also execute their tasks on the application's main thread. The dispatch framework provides a set of global concurrent queues we can use right away. These queues differ in their quality of service, in short, QoS, which is a way of telling the operating system how to prioritize the work submitted to these queues. We need to specify the quality of service class to get one of the six predefined global queues. Actually, you should only use four, as you'll see in a moment. Anyway, here are the possible priority values from the highest to lowest. User interactive. Use the user interactive queue for tasks that are critical for user interface updates. Code that affects the appearance or animation of user interface elements directly falls into this category. Tasks that need to complete almost instantly to keep the user interface fluid and responsive should be submitted to the global queue with QoS User Interactive. User Initiated The user initiated QoS is meant for tasks started by the user from the user interface that need to provide immediate results before continuing to use the app. For instance, loading a high-resolution image from the local persistence when the user clicks a button would be a good candidate for the user-initiated global queue. Utility Long-running tasks that are visible on the user interface but do not prevent the user from using the app should use the utility queue. Think of calling a web service or compressing a large file while displaying a progress indicator. There is no point in running such tasks on a higher priority queue because the system won't be able to speed them up. Yet, the energy impact would increase without actual benefits on performance or responsiveness. Background The background queue is a good choice for tasks that aren't time critical and don't require user interaction. For example, uploading local updates to the cloud or running backups could be performed on the background queue. That lets the system prioritize energy efficiency over speed for tasks that require a significant amount of time to complete and have no immediate effect on the user interface. Default. This is the default QoS if we don't specify one, and its priority is higher than utility but lower than user initiated. According to the documentation, its purpose is similar to user initiated. However, I'd suggest you specify user initiated explicitly to avoid confusion. And the last one, unspecified. Do not use this queue. It's here only to provide support for legacy systems. Choosing the right global queue will help you write fast, responsive, and energy efficient code. As we saw, we can access and use the application's main queue to schedule UI related tasks and we've got the concurrent global system queues with different priorities to execute tasks that do not belong in the main queue. 
On top of this, we can also create private dispatch queues. Now, when would we need a private dispatch queue? There are situations when we want to run serial tasks on a dispatch queue other than the main queue. Global queues are concurrent, therefore they won't do the trick. Thus, the only remaining option is to create a private dispatch queue. We can also create concurrent private dispatch queues. However, it is recommended to rely on the global system queues whenever possible because every new private dispatch queue may increase our application's thread consumption. But how can we avoid the creation of additional threads in the case of a private serial queue? As I show you in the next module, there is a way to create a private serial queue and delegate its tasks to a global system queue without losing the serialized execution model. Ok, now that we're done with the theory, let's jump right into the interesting implementation in Swift. See you in the next module.